This is the barking dog reaction. It's kind of boring, isn't it? Fortunately, I can fix that. To make it more interesting, I acquired this tiny piece of plastic pipe. <laughs> but before beginning with the large scale experiments, I should explain what the barking dog reaction even is. The barking dog reaction uses an oxidizing gas, which is nitrous oxide, and this reacts with carbon disulfide vapors. The laughing gas reacts with the carbon disulfide to form elemental sulfur, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. As a side product, toxic sulfur dioxide is formed, which is why you should not try this at home. It's a pretty big tube, isn't it? Because I didn't want to waste any nitrous oxide, I stuck this small plastic tube into the big plastic tube. You can somewhat taste and smell nitrous oxide. That's why I tipped over the tube. As I smelled it, I know it's decently full and I'm gonna add carbon disulfide. At the end of the day, carbon disulfide is neurotoxic, which is why I'm going to employ the Indian method while filling it into the tube, which is holding your breath. That's more than enough. The tube may explode and I would like to keep my fingers and to remotely detonate it, an electric igniter is ideal. It was crazy loud and check out all of that sulfur. <laughs> Test number two. If I inhale those, I'm not gonna die, but it's gonna be very uncomfortable. Time for a second test. It's interesting to see the flame linger around at the end. For fun, I'm going to try my own variation of this, which I call the breathing dragon experiment. For this, I will need nitromethane and methanol and pure oxygen. As I was flooding the tube, I turned off the light as I didn't want any unwanted visitors to stop by to check out what I'm doing. <laughs> Being in the forest at night with a gas bottle and a huge tube. How should I explain that? My mix contains about 15% of nitromethane and methanol. I did the entire shaking thing to evaporate it. Okay, let's see what will happen. I hope for something special. You were not the only ones that were disappointed. I was disappointed as well. But it's logical that this didn't really work out, as nitromethane and methanol don't pack that much energy. Well, it's to be expected. It's fascinating anyways. The flame was white and it lingered around for a pretty long time. Carbon disulfate has an insanely low auto-ignition temperature. It apparently ignites at 90 degrees Celsius and I'm gonna test that. I first tried ether. Ether is also known for apparently self-igniting, but not as much as carbon disulfide. And there you go, it ignited, making this beautiful blue flame. Before this demonstration, I tried to ignite the carbon disulfide using a glass rod I heated in boiling hot water, but apparently it's too cold outside and this demonstration didn't work. Carbon disulfide on the right has an insanely blue flame, which I think is beautiful. Another fun reaction to try with carbon disulfide is to dissolve white phosphorus in it. For this experiment, I cut off a small piece of highly toxic white phosphorus, which is enough to kill about 100 people. White phosphorus is insanely soluble in carbon disulfide and after a minute in shaking, I got this clear solution. I put the solution onto this piece of paper and had to wait for a few minutes. It's so cold outside that this reaction takes a while. There you go, here's a few experiments with carbon disulfide. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank all of my Patreons because without you guys, these experiments wouldn't be possible. So thanks for that. If you would like to become a Patreon too, please feel free to check the link in the description.